Okay, it's a little less crowded today. Let's take a look at the whole scenery here. Don't these jackets remind you a bit of Wayne's jacket? I mean, Wayne's jacket had the stripes here. What if Wayne is like, I don't know, one of these dudes? But why do they have similar jackets? Are those like workers jackets? So, um, is that related to mine? Do they use jackets like this if they are mine workers? I don't know. I, I legit have no idea. <laughs> I just noticed these stripes and was like, mm, <laughs> the stripes look familiar. The diner is a little quiet today, but the air is still heavy with the tantalizing smell of breakfast. One, the patrons of the danger. <laughs> talk to Avery. Hi, Avery. I'll leave. I'm gonna talk to Avery. I'm not gonna warn anyone about anything or... <laughs> I don't also want to cause panic. You slide into the booth across from Avery. Hey there, stranger. Before you can exchange words, Winnie sidles up a fresh mug of tea in hand. Heard you might need this. The answer to 29 down is oink, by the way. What, but the clue is pen sound. How is that a sound a pen makes? Wait, pen like big pen? Are you kidding me? How was I supposed to guess that? I don't know why you even bother with those things. They're just gonna frustrate you. It's called learning and I think that's why they bother with those crossword puzzles. <laughs> it's just something to do to fill the time, but maybe I should switch to Sudoku. Winnie leaves Avery contemplating daily newspaper puzzles, returning to her seat behind the counter. So, uh, thanks for telling me about last night. If you want to really get into the grisly details, you can tell me, I won't judge. <sighs> I would want to tell you, but I'm worried about Winnie. I mean, you might not be the one spreading gossip around the town, but I don't know about Winnie. <sighs> to be fair, I don't know either of you very well at the moment, but... Explore, try your tea. What if you don't believe me? Tell Avery about last night. Last night still feels raw. Why don't we just talk? I'm gonna try my tea. Oh lord, what a sound. I sip my tea in much more sophisticated way than what that sound just was. <laughs> you hesitantly take a sip of your tea. It tastes like you're drinking malt that someone tried to unsuccessfully spruce up with lemon palm. <laughs> what the hell is in this tea? Politely put the tea down and never pick it back up. <laughs> it tastes healthy. Take another sip. You know what? We're gonna need every single bit of, like, I don't know, vitamins and actual food that will keep us going. I mean, at Tabitha's house we got BB and J and, like, I'm a bit worried about <laughs> how we're gonna survive the week with that diet. <laughs> Well, luckily Stella should have those sconces. <laughs> but I'm gonna take another sip. Oh, I hate that sound. You take another sip. The flavor is strong and slightly unpleasant, but something that tastes this bad must be good for you. Well, that's one way to put it. Wow, not a lot of folks take to chaka so quickly. It's a fungus that grows on birch trees around here, supposedly super healthy, and it makes for a challenging drink. Call me impressed. 
Well, I'm glad I was able to impress you. It's... It's totally fine, it's healthy, it's good for me. <laughs> what if you don't believe me about last night? Oh yeah, these were the options I read before. Um, I'm gonna ask this. I could tell you about last night, but what if you don't believe me? I'm not here to judge, I'm here to listen. Tell Avery about last night. Um, I'm gonna tell them about last night and take a risk. You spill the beans, glad to have someone to talk to about the horrors you witnessed. Wow, that is some heavy stuff. No wonder Stella seemed distant. Monsters in the woods? I may not have lived here long, but I've never heard of anything like that happening around these parts. I can't say I like the thought of it. Yeah, Winnie is watching us. I have a feeling that Winnie is listening us. <sighs> I'm not sure how I feel about that. Now that I think about it, when the cops came in for their morning coffee, they mentioned something about going out to the woods to look for someone. It must have been Duke. They seemed so disconnected from it. I figured it couldn't be very serious, but... Wow. What if the cops are in on it? They seem what? They seem weirdly suspicious of me. I'm sure they've seen much worse. Small town cops not knowing how to do their jobs. Sounds about right. Remain silent. Wow, so many toxic assumptions. <laughs> um, I don't get it. They saw Stella's footage. They saw what happened out there, but it feels like so far all they've done is haunt me. Hey, I don't know if it if it'll help your anxiety, but even if they think you did something, I'm pretty sure they wouldn't bother going after you. Those cops come in here every day, and I feel like I know them pretty well by now. And let me tell you, they have no follow through. Oh, well, I guess that's even slightly comforting to hear. I can tell you the number of complaints they've just, like, dropped after a day or two. What kind of complaints? And I'll vouch for you if they try anything. Oh, thank you. I hadn't begged you as a transplant. Where are you from? Do you regret moving here? You should get out of here before things get any worse. You should get out of here before things get any worse. And take me with you. <laughs> Let me know if you happen across any leads. Say nothing. Um, I'm gonna ask. Do you regret moving here? I don't think I have the choice to have second thoughts. I'm not going anywhere without Aunt Winnie and... Okay, Aunt Winnie, okay. Aunt Winnie, good to know. And there's no way she's leaving this place. Mm. I had infected you as a transplant. Where are you from? I moved here from Charlotte. Gosh, three years ago? Maybe a little more. I've lost track. Aunt Winnie offered me a place to stay and a job. And who was I to pass on that sort of generosity? To be honest, it still feels like I just moved in. Practically everyone apart from the co folks grew up in this town, so it's like I'm the perpetual new kid. Well, if it's of any comfort, I think we are with you, the perpetual new kid now. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, folks here are plenty polite and friendly, but there's a shared history I'll never be a part of. Hmm. I 
think my character kind of understands what they are talking about. Mm, why did you leave Charlotte? I get it. I felt out of place the whole time I've been here. I haven't felt like an outsider at all. You should get out of here before things get any worse. Uh, yeah, these we read already. Um, I don't think I get it the same way they do. Because I've been here, what, one day? A day and a half, barely. <laughs> so like... I'm gonna ask, why did you leave Charlotte? If you don't mind me asking. Nah, it's cool. I was having some issues with my folks about my education, which um, wasn't great. Especially since I was still stuck under their roof. When my aunt heard about it, she offered me a job and a place to stay. And the rest is history. No, oh, that's kind. Um, well, I don't think I fully get it, but perhaps it might be something we can kind of at least partly share together. The feeling of not sharing the history, the people who grew up here share. I get it, I felt out of place the whole time I've been here. Folks on the whole have been plenty friendly, but life here is so different than what I'm used to. It's hard to explain, but I just don't feel like I belong. Exactly. There are worse ways to be, but I'm not sure I'll even entirely feel like I belong here. We're on the case, but I hardly know where to start. Let me know if you hear anything. Definitely. Oh man, it looks like my shift is starting. Hopefully the Chakas had a chance to start working its magic. The diner is where everyone comes to gossip, so I hear a lot about what goes around here. I'll let you know if anyone mentions those monsters or anything else strange or unusual. Avery slips out of the booth, giving a friendly half wave before disappearing into the back. You leave the diner ready to continue your day. Mm, swing by the general store. Well, Kanika is at the library, or at least I got the photo from Stella that she would be there, so she probably ain't here, even though Stella said that she often is here. Um, But it would be nice to know what kind of place this is, and this looks like a... Another very cool looking place as well. What do we see? We see like general store goods, we see stuffed animals. Is there a different word for animal that has been, well, is the right word preserved in this way after buying? Uh, authentic rocks, fresh pickles, pulled from the scarlet mine, sorted minerals, another tea banner. Um, a map again. I wonder where we are on it. <laughs> um, oh honey, in a bird shaped jars. I appreciate that a lot. Oh no, that's a possum. Oh, I hope it's not related to dust. Yeah, and I guess someone is visiting this place, perhaps? A new character. This is your first time seeing the general store in the light of day. A young man sits at the table by the register, too preoccupied with his phone to care that you stepped in. Ah, uh, offer him your boiled peanuts. <laughs> Never ending peanuts. You should leave town, there are monsters in the woods. <laughs> Imagine being the new person in town and just like telling everyone of the impending doom that is about to 
Hence you. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm Katie. If I want to buy chips or something, do I talk to you or... I'm gonna introduce myself. Hi, I'm Katie. I just got to town yesterday. Yeah, I know. Mom told me. Okay, so you're perhaps Sybil's child and Kanika's sibling? Um, offer him your boiled peanuts. Yes! <laughs> totally worth it each time the young man looks up at you now quite punching back of peanuts curls his lips in disgust and returns to his phone um what's your name miles nice to meet you miles mm, is this too personal or fake question i don't know i'm gonna ask <laughs> What you doing on your phone? Games, you probably haven't heard of them. Okay. Um, so, if I wanted to buy some chips or something here, do I talk to you or... My size. I guess, yeah. Kanika decided to skip work today, so... Of course, whatever plans I had didn't matter. Just take the chips. I don't care. Um, I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> I'm paying for my chips. Wouldn't that be stealing? Won't Kanika get mad? Hell yeah, thanks for looking out. I'm good. I'm not about to turn down free stuff. Take chips. I'm paying for my chips, dude. I insist. I'm not ringing you up. They can or leave him. Well, I guess I've got to use my street smart option. Hell yeah, thanks for looking out, man. You grab a bag of salt and vinegar chips from a nearby shelf. It will sustain you in the coming days. Right on. See ya, Miles. Miles doesn't respond as you turn and leave the general store. <laughs> Head to the library. You enter the former town hall. What once must have been a stately foyer has since been converted into rows of shelves. Meeting rooms and offices long ago gave way to assorted reference collections and reading areas. Let's take a look at this again a bit better. What do we see? This is the biggest photo we see. What on earth is happening? It looks like there is a big fire and maybe some burned trees. Um, people are carrying someone tied to a metal bar or railing I guess might be another word for this um they look sad these look like the kind of uh, safety helmets that have lamp on like lamp in front of them are these mine workers people working in the mines they look really sad and worn down. And then there are kids who are smiling happily and joyfully. Why are they smiling if the adults look so unhappy? I mean, usually kids kind of reflect what the adults are feeling, so... There is this... some kind of house with a tower, okay. Um, and there are other paintings. Um, is, wait, this one has a tower and this one has, well, tower is not the right word, but you get this tall construction is what I'm talking about. So is this the same building as this one? And if it is, what is it? I don't think the church was shaped 
like this. So, what building is this? Was the town hall shaped like this? I mean, the town hall had some pillars. But are these windows or pillars? I don't know. <laughs> My memory is bad. But it looks like there is Gretchen Kanika, I think, and Stella. They look so cute there. <laughs> uh, and a cat. I hope I'm not missing too many things. Well, here is clearly the symbol of the bird. I mean, it kind of reminds me of the birds we saw in our family tree in the forbidden wing of the estate, but perhaps I'm making connections which aren't actually there? I don't know. Oh, hey, you made it! Settle in with Stella and Kanika, shush Stella and point at all of the books before heading over to her table. I'm gonna settle in with Stella and Kanika. You head over to Stella and Kanika's table and settle in. Oh, they all look so cute. You made it. Glad you could join us. Oh, these are the sconces. Stella, you're a miracle worker. I bet my character is hungry again. I mean... BB and J can only go so far. We need other food as well. <laughs> you made it, I'm glad you could join us. I agree wholeheartedly with Stella. I am elated that you're back. Oh, Christian, with her heart shaped bandana on her collar. Did you send my regards to that foul feline? Don't worry, Gretchen, I told Fufu all about our little adventure last night. Wink at Gretchen and give a subtle thumbs up. Ignore Gretchen, you're in public. <sighs> I mean, Kanika seems like a practical person. She didn't really buy into all the explanations her mother gave for ditchlings and she wanted to find a logical solution. I don't think she would appreciate me talking to Gretchen here. I mean, I made already a bad first impression. I arrived at her house in the middle of the night and showed this horrible video and perhaps it's time to try to make a better impression. <laughs> I'm gonna wink at Gretchen and give her a subtle thumbs up. Wonderful. I hope she stews on that for a long, long time. Morning, Katie. You look tired. My goodness. Whatever happened to common decency? You can't go around telling someone they look unwell. You look marvelous, Katie. Thank you, Gretchen. I wholeheartedly agree with you on this. <laughs> Snitch on Miles. Haha, <laughs> yeah, the estate isn't the easiest place to get a good eight hours. It was hard to fall asleep last night, all things considered. I'll sleep when I'm dead. I'm pretty amped up, actually. I've never done a Scooby Doo before. Kanika? You can't just tell someone they look tired. Remain silent. Well, I'm not gonna criticize her immediately from the beginning. <laughs> I'm gonna laugh it off. <laughs> yeah, the estate isn't the easiest place to get a good eight hours. I never realized houses could get so windy. And all of those dreadful creatures in every nook and corner. It's a wonder you got even a wink. Every nook and corner? That could mean many things, Gretchen. What do you mean by that? I can only imagine that place was already falling apart the last time I was there. And it's been years. Ghost tracks. San Antonio, Texas. <laughs> I can't believe it hasn't been condemned. 
Not that there's anyone here to do the condemning. Anyways, I guess we should get started. Oh! Before I forget, we gotta talk about that photo you sent me this morning. Ganika, check this out. Katie found it in Tabby's garden this morning, right in line of sight of her room. What in the world is that liquid around it? It looks like pus. Do you think it's Wayne? Those boots are too big to be Tabitha's. I can't say I'm thrilled at the thought of someone watching my room. Yeah. I don't know if there's a connection to what happened in the woods, but it felt worth texting Stella about it. Say nothing. I'm gonna choose this option. Do you think it's Wayne? That creep who keeps coming around my mom's tea room? He snuck up on us last night and called out Katie by name. And those boot prints match up with the mining getup. Okay, so it was. So the striped jacket, I mean, the jackets with the reflector stripes and are workers jackets and they are used by the miners if i'm understanding this correctly i'm glad the two of you have me there to protect you you're so right gretchen whoa apparently i missed a lot last night huh I wonder if there's any connection between that guy and what happened in the woods last night. Like what? I mean, I don't have anything specific, but we do have that whole prophecy of impending doom angle to explore. And this photo is weird. I can't stop thinking about those splatters on the ground. If he's sick, maybe it's from the creatures you encountered. Hey there, strangers. And a literal stranger. Offer him your pot peanuts. <laughs> yes! You extend your bag of peanuts to the librarian in a gesture of friendship and good fate. Yes! <laughs> Um, <laughs> if only I could make a thumbnail of all of their shocked faces. <laughs> um, I don't know what to say. Is this a gift? I'm allergic to peanuts. Not serious allergic, but they give me a rash. Hey, Oscar, this is Katie. You know Tabby's cousin? Oh, I should have known you were a Scarlet. You look so much like Vivian. Not that I knew her very well. I was still a little kid when she left. But that Scarlet resemblance, it's uh, strong. Um, I'm Oscar Gutierrez, chief librarian and only librarian. <laughs> Oscar's amazing. He practically built this library from scratch. Yeah, I'm a little jealous of what the kids around here get to grow up with. They don't know how good they have it. Back when I was in elementary school, all the library had was a couple shelves of boring books donated by old people. You all are too kind, but speaking of kids, have either of you seen Rosalina around town? Rosalina? <laughs> I don't want to be a helicopter dad, but she hasn't been answering my texts and I wanted to make sure she isn't getting into trouble out there. You know, the crowd she hangs around with. No idea what's going on. They're good kids at heart. I'm sure they're just up at the old Maxwell place doing teen stuff. 
I went up there plenty of times in my day, but I'll be sure to keep my eyes peeled. What's the old Maxwell place? Kids are smarter than you think. She can take care of herself. I don't like the thought of teens getting up to mischief with all those ditchlings in the woods. I'm sure she's fine, say nothing. Well, there is something in the woods, ditchlings, whatever you want to call them. Sibyl said that they are not a danger. I would want to trust Sibyl because it seems like Gretchen trusts her. But my intuition says that there are things she's not telling us. It's like she's behind the scenes pulling some strings, telling that we all have our part to play in this. I'm gonna ask, what's the old Maxwell place? It's this great old abandoned spot. We used to hang out there when we were teens. I can't believe I used to be so reckless. The floors there were like Swiss cheese. I should really have a talk with Rosalina when she gets home. Street smart, kids are smarter than they think she can take care of herself. I don't know her, I don't know if she can take care of herself. I mean, kids are often smarter than we think, but I don't know this Rosalina at all. <laughs> I don't like the thought of teens getting up to me. Yeah, mm. should I talk about this? I'm trying to think like what are the consequences and implications of my choices here. If I say nothing, will they be in trouble? I'm gonna be honest, people need to know. I don't like the thought of teens getting up to mischief with all those ditchlings in the woods. Ditchlings? That's actually why we came in today. Have you ever heard of them? They're a cryptid and seeing one's supposed to mean a disaster around the corner. <laughs> Kaneko's face. Doesn't ring a bell. Dang, were they shot? Okay, if you were, say, trying to predict a horrible disaster that might befall our town, where would you start looking? Well, <laughs> they say history repeats itself, so I'd probably try and figure out what sort of disasters this region typically falls prey to. Uh, should I be worried about something? I don't know yet. I'll be right back, gonna go nap some more books. Behave while I'm gone, Gretchen. Oh, you don't have to worry about her, Stella. You're such a good dog, aren't you, Gretchen? Here, have a biscuit, old girl. Ah! <gasps> Gretchen gets a biscuit! Well, ain't you the sweetest thing on two legs? <laughs> I need to suck it. <laughs> it's the best thing ever. Even Kanika is smiling. Gretchen inhales the soft biscuit, true leaking from her toothless mouth as she swallows it whole. I'm pretty sure Stella's barking up the wrong tree, Oscar. I don't think you have to worry about any horrible calamity befalling the town. But she is right about the weird stuff. There's definitely something unusual going on out in those woods. I don't believe in this supernatural stuff, but the woods aren't safe. A man is already dead. It's nothing that we can't get to the bottom of. Whatever's out there in the woods has been brutalizing the local wildlife. Get out while you still can! <laughs> Imagine telling everyone to get out while they still can. <laughs> um, whatever's out there in the woods has been brutalizing the local wildlife. I don't think it's safe. I'm gonna try calling Rosalina again. 
I'm sure she's fine, really. Rosalina's a smart kid. She knows better than to go around getting into trouble and we'll make sure to keep our eyes peeled. Thanks, Kanika. And Katie, if you see a 13-year-old girl with a black braid and glasses, would you let her know her dad is worried about her? She's 13? And you don't know where she is? I mean, that happens in that age, but still, I would be worried too. Worried sick, to be honest. Of course, I will let her know. Oscar anxiously wanders off, phone in hand. Got him, just grabbed a whole mess of local history books. Stella sets a massive pile of books on the table and pulls up a chair. All right. This is gonna be so much faster with the two of you here to help out. Got our snacks, got our source documents. Let's get this research party started. Reading awaits. Just quickly gonna see. All oh, such cute stickers. And Gretchen is totally helping us. This whole scene is kind of like... It's so wholesome and I feel so happy as a player. I don't know. I, I feel so immersed in this story. I love it. Reading awaits. Flip through Veins of Scarlet, a history of the Scarlet Hollow coal mines. I'll flip to Silas Scarlet, soldier, woodsman, leader. That's interesting, really interesting. So, if the last name is Scarlet, they should be related to us. Was Silas the person who was in the roots of our family tree? Like the one who kind of started our line when we were in the forbidden wing of the estate? Was he the one... Was Silas the one in the bottom of the tree? I can't remember. <laughs> no. I've leaped to Appalachian Folk Monsters. Reading is for suckers. Let Kanika and Stella do the work for you. <laughs> I'm very interested in Silas Scarlet. Silas Everett Scarlet was born to Colonel Everett J. Scarlet in 1818, one of 12 siblings. He grew up in eastern North Carolina during a tumultuous time in the state's history, and not much is known about his life before he joined the army in 1836. So 12 siblings. I don't think there were mentions of 12 siblings in the family tree. Why aren't they mentioned there? Or did I just Miss them? Hmm. Where are the other 11 siblings? <laughs> okay, so he grew up eastern North Carolina and joined the army in 36. He quickly rose through the ranks in part due to his father's connections, but also due to a particular ruthlessness for which he received the nickname Bloody Silas Scarlet. Ruthlessness? What? The federal government granted the now Captain Silas a tract of bounty land in exchange for his service in the Indian War, and he settled into the hills of North Carolina in 1841. The land would become Scarlet Hollow. North Carolina. But it started as a simple log cabin built by Silas's own two hands, occupied by his family of ten. Silas, his wife Mary Joseph Scarlett, and their eight children. Silas and his eight children. Were there eight children in the family tree? Logging business brought many workers and fellow landowners to the hills, but. It wasn't until Silas discovered rich seams of coal running underneath the entire region 
that Scarlet Hollow was really put on the map. He saved what he could and bought the surrounding hillside at a great discount, cleverly hiding what he knew about the land's true value. Thus he had all the resources to found Scarlet Hollow's now famous coal mine. You're finished with this one. Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, let's read about the coal mines then. Forced into retirement at age 50 due to a war injury from his time in the Indian Wars, exasperated by his short stint serving as a captain in the Confederacy, Silas Scarlet also lost his eldest two sons to that bloodiest of wars, leaving his third eldest son, Andrew Jackson Scarlet, to take charge of the mine. Okay, so, um, lost his eldest two sons. It was, it was a family of ten, oh my lord, I just read it. <laughs> okay, but Silas lost two eldest sons and left the mine to Andrew, who was the third in line. Under his leadership, the mine prospered, undoubtedly in part due to the growth of the railroad industry. Managed to evade the coal union for decades, making them one of the most profitable mines in the country. Andrew Scarlett built the surrounding town into what it is today, with expensive stone buildings, a bustling main street and overseeing it all, the elegant Scarlet Estate that was, until 1889, the largest and finest feat of architecture in the region. Hmm. Culminating in the tragic collapse of 1918, it was found that Charles Shaw, the co-manager of the mine, had loosened security measures to increase production during World War I, resulting in a fatal collapse and the deaths of over 160 men and boys, some as young as 10. Charles Shaw, so someone who wasn't part of the Scarlet family. This must have been a pretty big thing concerning the size of this town. The casualties included Andrew Jackson Scarlet's eldest son, Theodore, who had taken over for his aging father during the bustle of the war. His brother Enoch B. Scarlet managed to pull the mine from the brink of ruin there by saving the town. So many names, I'm gonna have trouble remembering all of these if they are gonna be important. Um, Enoch I remember from the family tree because the name was so easy to remember and different from other names. After those trying events, Enoch managed to pull the mine from the brink of ruin, thereby saving the town. So this is how your family made its fortune. Uh, flip through Appalachian Folk Monsters. A few entries catch your eye. Wampus Cat, a large cat-like creature with a loud howling voice, often said to sound like a woman crying out in pain. Tommy Knockers, animatic cave-dwelling creatures primarily known for causing mischief. Taily Poe, a small creature with a long tail and wide yellow eyes. Well, in the end of first episode, we saw someone in next to alpacas kind of hiding inside a cave. And it says that this creature is cave-dwelling creature. So let's read about Tommyknockers. Tommyknockers originated in Cornish mythology, spreading to the uni United States when Cornish immigrants began working in... Appalachian Mines, the named for the knocking that can be heard from seemingly within the walls before a cave in. Oh, so kind of like Warners. According to some, the knocking serves as a benevolent warning. Hmm. 
Others believe that the creatures take stolen hammers to the supports of mines and collapse them on whoever is unfortunate enough to still be inside. They are traditionally thought to be impish, leprechaun-like beings, but some claim they are spirits of dead miners, forever cursed to haunt their final resting place. I don't know why, I mean, if they are spirits of the of dead miners, it would make sense that they would want to warn if caving happens, you know, protect other miners who are doing the same work. Wampus Cat, often linked to Cherokee legends, some cite the Wampus Cat as originating with the story of a woman who sought vengeance against a monstrous cat demon for driving her husband mad. She hunted it down and by wearing a bobcat mask, tricked it into using its own wild magic on itself, freeing the people of the region from its evil. Others say the creature comes from the story of a woman who wore the belt of a wildcat to witness forbidden hunting rites. The hunters of her village gathered to perform the rites and she watched in secret from underneath the cat's belt but was soon discovered. For her indiscretion she was fused with pelt and transformed into a creature that was neither human nor cat. Forced to wander the wilderness alone, feared by all. Her calls are those of great sadness and serve as a warning to anyone who dares go against tradition. Wow. Telepo. There was a hunter who lived in a tiny cabin in the middle of the woods, all alone with his hunting dog. One night, after a particularly bad week of hunting, both their stomachs empty, the hunter spied something out of the corner of his eye. Some small creature... Oh, that looks so scary. Some small creature had gotten into the cabin through a hole, and before he could even figure out what it was, he'd drawn his gun and fired at the thing, his hunger guiding his actions. But it was quick and ran back through its hidey hole and out of sight, leaving only its long black tail shot off by the hunter's rifle. Wow. Guess this'll have to do, he said to his dog and threw the tail in a pot to cook a soup. He and his dog ate well that night, the tail filling them both up. The hunter crawled into bed, satisfied, and his dog curled up at his feet. He woke up to the sound of long nails scrabbling across the wood. His dog was nowhere in sight, only a rumble spot on the covers where he'd been, and in the gloom, he saw two big yellow eyes staring right at him. <gasps> Butch. I want my daily pole. A high hoarse voice croaked from the darkness. Go away, he screamed at the thing. But it stepped closer to him. Still shrouded in darkness, the sound of long claws dragging across hardwood accompanying its movements. I want my tail, Paul. The creature growled again. I'll get my dog after you. The hunter squeaked, his voice catching in his throat with fear. But there was no dog to be seen. I want my daily bow. Before the hunter could so much as scream, the creature left from the darkness, long claws stretched out towards the hunter. No one is sure what the creature did to him that night, but the next morning, 
all that remained of the hunter, his dog, and his cabin was a chimney standing alone in the woods. You're done here. Yes, damn right I'm done. <laughs> you close the book and put it back. 